What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Coin Vigilante Podcast, where you're going to get to hear a layman talk to some of the most prominent figures in the crypto and finance world as they try to explain some of the most complicated topics regarding finance, economics, stock market, and crypto in general. I will use this as an opportunity to gain a better understanding, and I hope you do as well. You're going to enjoy this next killer episode. And again, I thank you for watching. Let's go. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Coin Vigilante Podcast. So today I am really excited because we have a very, very special guest. We have Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin. Now, Litecoin has been around for about nine years and it has remained in the top 10 ranking for cryptos for that long. And, you know, it's gained a reputation for being a very fast and very reliable method of payment. But Without further ado, Charlie, welcome to the show. Hey, Carlos. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, you know, Charlie, a lot of people, you know, I'm a big Litecoin guy. I've been around w with Litecoin ever since I got started with crypto about, you know, four years ago. And, you know, I've gotten my, you know, my fiance to buy Litecoin. I've gotten my, you know, my in-laws, my family members, everyone's with Litecoin. But, you know, we're going to talk about Litecoin a lot today. But before we get into that, can you let people know, you know, a little bit of your background, whether it's work experience and kind of how you got into Bitcoin and crypto? Yeah. So um, I graduated from MIT uh, in 1999, got my uh, bachelor's and also master's in 2000 uh, in computer science. So I was in, uh, came out to the Silicon Bay area where I worked for, uh, worked in software industry. Um, before I, I found out about Bitcoin, um, I was working at Google um, on various different things like YouTube, Google Play, and Chrome. Um, and then in 2011, I discovered Bitcoin and pretty much fell down the rabbit hole. I mean, everyone probably had have has their own story, right? So I've been kind of in the um, in the commodities a bit. So I've like bought and sold gold, gold futures. So I kind of understand like gold as, as money. And, um, I obviously understand software. So when I saw Bitcoin, it was kind of like, it really, I really quite understood what, what it's all about. Right. It's kind of the, it's, it's digital gold. Right. So I really digged into like the code and tried to understand what every, everything about Bitcoin and really kind of, um, it really resonated with me. Um, and that's how I got, got into Bitcoin in 2011. So what was the first thought? Like you, you heard about Bitcoin, you did some research and like you said, down in the rabbit hole, what was your first thought when you, when you learned about Bitcoin? My first thought was obviously like, does it really work? Right. Is it even possible to have something digital that can't be copied? Right. So before Bitcoin, anything digital is you can't stop people from copying it. Right, so like um, MP3s or, or video files or, or JPEGs or whatever it is, right? So um, being able to create something digital that cannot be copied is obviously a requirement for digital money. Right? You can't just print your own. And um, so that was kind of the breakthrough. So I read the white paper, obviously, and really digged into it and kind of like understood how it works and why it works. Um, and that, that was like the first like major thing I realized that this is actually something innovative and something totally new in this space. And so when you're talking about, so it can't be copied, are you talking about the scarcity aspect? So, you know, there's only 21 million Bitcoin out there. They yep. can't be duplicated. And so I don't know about you, but you know, when I first got into Bitcoin, I mean, part of the reason was I was doing some research. I was actually in college and, you know, I'm like, man. I keep seeing the the debt increase. I keep seeing, you know, a lot of money being, you know, printed out of thin air, a lot of things like this happening. And I'm like, isn't that a, an issue? And I'm like, what even is a solution? And then I kind of read into Bitcoin. I'm like, wait a minute, we finally have a solution. So are you talking about that too, in terms of um, the scar scarcity aspect for Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So in order for something to be good, good sound money, um, you can't you can't just print 
unlimited amounts of it, right? And that's what we're seeing with fiat currency today. And I think gold is is a better form of money than than fiat, right? And the reason why gold um, people aren't using gold today is because it's heavy. It's hard to kind of hold. It's hard to store. Um, it's hard to uh, to use. Um, if you try to send like gold to someone in China, it's just kind of impossible, right? You have to ship it to them and insure it. Um, so when Bitcoin came came along, it's obviously like a better form of money. It's very similar to gold, but it's um, in in an aspect where it's uh, the scarcity, right? The you can't just no one can print more more bitcoins. Um, you can mine them, and and the cap is twenty one million, and no government or or company or whatever entities can just create more. And that's that's very important for for sound money. But how Bitcoin is better than gold is it's just cheap to to send, um, cheap to store, and it's just it's digital form of money. It's better than gold and fiat, obviously. And so, okay, so we say that you know people understand. Okay, well, it's scarce. So a lot of people and actually family members, when I tried to get them into Bitcoin and Litecoin and all this, but they're like, well, it's backed by nothing, and you know, I want to hear your take, you know, usually what, from my knowledge, you know, what I usually tell them is in my eyes, look, the dollar is absolutely backed by nothing, right? It's printed out of thin air. You know, there is value in Bitcoin because no one can print it, but you know, it kind of, it kind of actually makes me think a little bit, well, is it backed by something? And the only thing I can think of is electricity backs Bitcoin and Litecoin because there's a lot of computing power around the world that keeps the the network going, and to me that's a way that it's backed. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think the whole concept of being of needing to be backed by something is just wrong. Um, so the fiat is is backed by the U.S. government, right? Or so U.S. dollar is backed by the U.S. government. People say it's right. backed by the by the U.S. military. Um, it used to be backed by gold. Uh, and then you can ask, like, what is gold backed by? I mean, gold is backed by nothing, right? It's basically backed by people's kind of trust in it functioning for thousands of years. Um, it's a belief that, system. Yeah, yeah, and, and that people kind of like this shiny object. Um, Bitcoin, if you have to say, it's it's backed by kind of the usefulness of it, right? So um, the fact that it's, it's useful, um, and it's scarce, just gives it value. Um, but it, I don't really like talk about what is it backed by. That's not really important, right? What's important is that it's it fulfills uh, the need of a good sound money. And that's all that matters. Right. Okay. And it looks like a lot of people right now, you know, because before, like in the 2017 mania and that cycle, a lot of people were buying Bitcoin and cryptos because they were just going up. I mean, it was just a, an insane rally. A crazy bull market people are making a lot of money and but a lot of people and it was mainly driven by retailers but a lot of people didn't really understand the full concept of what bitcoin is until this new cycle and i see this new cycle as a more mature cycle because given the current economic circumstances with the printing with the devaluation of purchasing power a lot of people are realizing and corporations this time it's corporations and massive institutions wait a minute you know, just like Michael Saylor says, we have a melting ice cube sitting in our balance sheets as everything else around us gets more expensive. And so we're going to choose to buy Bitcoin and store it in our balance sheet and replace it, you know, replace a fiat into a sound money and a hard money. And I think it's really interesting because that's what we're seeing today. And but, you know, leaving that aside. So you talk about you know, Bitcoin being more portable, right? A lot of people can use it, spend it, they can send it to whoever, um, whoever they want. However, you know, it's funny. I did this type of a mystery guest type of thing um, for the podcast with you. I put someone with a question mark, who do you think it is? And, you know, I'm going to send Bitcoin to the three people that get it right. And so I'm like, all right, I message these guys. I'm like, okay, well, send me your Bitcoin address. I'm typing, you know, and I normally don't send Bitcoin, right? I mainly just store it. Mm -hmm. I'm typing the address. I put it in and I put, I'm going to send $30 to this guy. And it tells me, well, it's an $8 fee. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I've actually haven't really tried to send Bitcoin ever, right? It's just sitting there. And I'm like, um, 
can you actually send me your Litecoin address? Uh, because, <laughs> you know, the fees are maybe a cent or, or lower, right? So you're talking about this. Now, Litecoin is very fast. What, what drove you to build Litecoin? You know, what was the reason why Litecoin exists? And if you were to, you know, let's say there's a guy walking around in the street and they were to ask you, what's Litecoin? What would you tell them? Um, well, I've always like positioned it as silver to Bitcoin's gold. So I saw kind of how gold and silver has functioned or have functioned uh, over over our history and um, and kind of wanted to create something that mimics that kind of duality between gold and silver. So Bitcoin and Litecoin, they, they complement each other. Um, they work well together. So like you, like your example, right? Today, if you try to send Bitcoin, it costs like ten dollars um, fee, which makes it really expensive if you're, if you're only trying to send thirty dollars. But if you're trying to send like a hundred thousand dollars, like it's cheap. It works better than than other ways of sending money, like wire transfer. Um, so Bitcoin works for larger amounts, and Litecoin works for smaller amounts. Fees are are, are minuscule. The the network is still very secure. It's secure enough for sending whatever, a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars. Right. If you're, if you're sending like millions of dollars over Litecoin network, you probably want to wait a while, right? You want to wait for enough confirmations for, for it to, for you to be sure that no one can reverse the transactions. Right. Obviously that's, this hasn't, hasn't happened before. It's kind of a theoretical attack of someone attacking the network and reversing transactions. Um, but you just want to be sure, right. If you're sending that much money. So Litecoin is, is very good for sending uh, small amounts. So in the similar way, people use like silver and gold. People use silver for smaller amounts of stuff. People store gold um, in their in their bank safe. Um, so gold is more of a store value, and silver is more of a means of exchange. But they both can work uh, in both cases. And you're you're seeing something similar with Bitcoin and Litecoin today. Got it. And so you know when we're we're talking about this, for example, right now. And yeah, a lot of people are seeing the value in Litecoin, you know, not just regular people, but a lot of people also see, I think, the store of value aspect to Litecoin because I was actually reading an article. I believe about 80% of all mined Litecoin in February was bought by Grayscale. Now, Grayscale is a massive organization and it basically is an on-ramp for institutions to buy Bitcoin and Litecoin. Now, you know, I didn't really get into the weeds of, of like, number one, I don't know if you can answer this question. Why is it that people are willing to buy GBTC and I don't know if it's GLTC or something instead of just buying the regular Litecoin and the regular Bitcoin? Is it because there's regulatory hurdles that don't allow them to just hold a Litecoin and Bitcoin or what what's what's the reason behind that i think there are two reasons so first of all the well the the symbol for the like the um grayscale litecoin trust is ltcn um okay. the the reason why people buy for example ltcn over just buying litecoin is one they they're not they don't want to kind of do self custody cuz they don't know how to do it so it's it's a daunting thing to to buy litecoin off an exchange and then like hold it in their own wallet. They don't want to hold it on an exchange wallet. Um, so that's hard. So that's why they buy like a, a stock, right? So okay. LTCN is an OTC uh, traded stock. So they can use their um, brokerage account like E-Trade or whatever they use, Charles Schwab or whatever, to just buy this, this stock, right, LTCN. So it makes it very easy for them to um, have exposure to to the crypto space, whether it's GBTC or LTCN or um, or the Ethereum trust. And the second reason is is similar. It's because they, if it's an institutional player, they're not able to buy the the direct uh, coins. They have to buy like something. So that's why people are pushing really hard for. We're hoping that the um, ETFs uh, happen. Right, so if, if there's a Bitcoin ETF or a Litecoin ETF, it makes it even easier. Right, OTC traded okay. uh, stock is is still not really widely supported. It's still harder to to trade. But if it's an ETF, it just makes it really easy. So o OTC stock is kind of halfway there to an ETF, um, and that's why people people buy it. And there's a lot of demand for LTCN. Right, right now, 
like the the price above premium is is ridiculous right it's at least 10 times i don't know what it is today um but it's there's just a lot of demand for for litecoin i mean it's it's crazy because i i think they hold about 1.4 million litecoin which is about two to three percent of the entire litecoin supply so yeah. and i mean for the past three months two months i mean i think i just saw i mean grayscale just bought about forty thousand litecoin just yesterday or something like that and so they're accumulating a lot and my question is why do you think litecoin has been one of the most popular products why are they holding so much litecoin what what is it that that's driving institutions to hold litecoin i mean i know why i like litecoin but what are your thoughts on that um i think it's it's one of the top like currencies right the it's it's well known so um bitcoin ethereum and litecoin i would say is like kind of the one of the few like well-known currencies so like companies like paypal for example chose four currencies and litecoin is one of them for them to support and that's the case like pretty much everywhere you see like if you go to um google finance look at crypto prices like the top three four would have litecoin on it right the first four they show um so it's 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 a well-known kind of coin um and uh it's maybe people think it's underpriced right bitcoin has already uh gotten higher than the previous all-time high and litecoin still hasn't so maybe it's people think it's it's underpriced and they're trying to bet that it's going to go up a lot um yeah the other the other crazy thing about the grayscale litecoin trust is it's a it's kind of a one-way thing right when grayscale when people deposit litecoin into this trust they can't pull it out they can only add so grayscale when grayscale they don't really buy litecoin it's more about people depositing litecoin into the trust got it um and when that happens they don't they don't have a redemption policy i think it's just the sec doesn't allow them to have this uh, redemption policy so you, just like bitcoin trust and ethereum trust they can't you can't pull your ltc out you can sell the share right you can sell the ltc and share when when it's a when you when you're allowed to but you can't pull the ltc out so the crazy it's crazy because that means grayscale keeps accumulating more and more ltc which takes it off the market um and that's that's good for for the price yeah i think that's that's pretty good i mean because think about it, it's a supply shock i mean if 80 percent of all mined litecoin were bought in grayscale right or were deposited in grayscale for the month of february i mean that just tells you that the demand is there for litecoin and the demand is there for those coins that are scarce which is bitcoin and litecoin you know there's there's a ton of coins out there you know so many tokens um you know you know they call them crap coins and all that stuff and you know the institutions and the smart players know what they're buying and again like you said litecoin is one of the most liquid coins out there it's literally on every exchange and so the reliability for litecoin is there litecoin has been in the top 10 ranking since basically its inception right so it's gained that reputation of being there doing what it does best which is a medium of exchange it's reliable proof of work scarce all of those things are being hit and now it is fungible so you have been working on the fungibility aspect now, a lot of people, when I mention fungibility, they're like, what the heck is that? What is that word? So we have MWeb, the Mimblewimble extension blocks or something like that, right? This mm -hmm. is something that has been developed for Litecoin over the past year and a half. And there was the code completion for MWeb on March 15th. So what does that mean? What kind of upgrade does this give to Litecoin? Sure. So I'm, I'm sure people have heard of NFTs these days, right? Non-fungible tokens. Um, so fungi fungibility is an important concept for, for money, right? So what that, what it means is, um, every coin, uh, is equal and identical to every other coin. So one Litecoin equals one Litecoin. Um, and if you think about it, that's not the case today with Bitcoin and Litecoin coins aren't very fungible because of, um, the history involved of the coin and other aspects where, uh, you hear a story about people sending Bitcoin to Coinbase and then they get their account shut down because Coinbase saw that the coins came from, let's say, a dark net market, right? So Coin Coinbase is like, I can't, we can't really service you because of of the connection to to dark net market. I don't know if they still do that. Um, 
but there there is definitely an issue where people kind of it's not just about um doing anything illegal right? it's more about it's a lot about like just financial privacy if if you get paid if your paycheck is in in bitcoin or litecoin you get whatever amount of money every month if you take those coins and like buy a coffee with it or send it to your friend if you send like ten dollars to your friend they would immediately see that you have x amount of bitcoin or like on your account and that's just that's not um <laughs> i mean it's it's okay but it's it, you prefer for money to not be not be so um transparent right so you want it to be fungible right. where it doesn't matter what coin you send to the other person it doesn't reveal anything about you um and it's not like and even if you don't you have nothing to hide um you still want financial privacy so fungibility gives you that and this is why we've been working hard on on mweb um which is a uh, an upgrade that gives you um it's an extension block so it's kind of like a side chain but i i see it as like an attached side chain so you can move coins from from the main chain to the mweb chain and so if you move one litecoin there then you have one litecoin in the mweb chain and then once you're in the mweb chain everything is is fungible so um what i mean by that is there's confidential transaction which means that the amount is is hidden so if i send if i'm on mweb and i send you some coins you know how many coins you received i know how many coins i sent but no one else can actually see what they can do is using cryptography they can be sure that i didn't create coins out of thin air right that's that's the most important thing which is um the coins are tracked but the actual right. amount is not in the clear. So people other than you and I cannot see how much how many Litecoins I sent you, but they can be sure that I didn't create any other thin air. Um, and that's that's very important for for fungibility. Yeah, that's um, that's such an underestimated development, I think, in my opinion, because you know I don't see a ton of people talking about it. There are a few people, right? I mean, the Litecoin community just talks about it so much because it's such a massive upgrade. And you know, for the people that always say, "Well, Litecoin has no development," or "There's no development going on with Litecoin," I think this is one of the most, you know, insane developments that's coming for Litecoin. I mean, the fact that it kind of brings a little bit of financial privacy to it, right? Like you said, and you know, I read this article from Al you know, lighthouse on Twitter. And he was talking about, you know, if I'm working, like you said, and there's employee A and employee B, because Litecoin and Bitcoin are so transparent because of the public ledger, you know, people can see how much I'm receiving. And so that kind of privacy aspect, you know, is not really found right now uh, with Litecoin and Bitcoin and this will bring it, right? So now another question. So do you see in, in your mind, in all honesty, do you think that there would be regulatory concerns because this brings some privacy to this? Like, do you think exchanges are going to be unhappy or governments or what's going on with that? Uh, so yes, there is definitely a, a risk of um, exchanges or, or, or regular regulators not being happy with, with this upgrade. Cause they, I mean, they like a lot, there's a lot of like the privacy coins that, some exchanges have delisted um, because they don't want, they want to um, kind of, the regulators are not happy about it because they can't see what's going on and they want to be able to make sure that no one's doing any, um, anything shady like money laundering. Right. Um, so before, before we even like started on this path, I reached out to most of the major exchanges and kind of to get their thoughts about this. And they all came back to me and said, Basically, they don't see any problems with it, um, but obviously they can't be sure, right? So it's it, there's definitely a small amount of risk. But I think it's worth it for for achieving like more fungibility for Litecoin. Um, so the way we're doing this is a an opt-in extension block. So exchanges don't need to support the extension block. They don't need to support MWeb addresses. Um, if you want to send, if you have coins in the MWeb extension block. And you want to send it to like an exchange that only has the regular L or M addresses. You can just uh, peg out your coins, basically move it out from the extension block back to the main chain, and then send it to the exchange. You can even do it like directly, right? Pegging out from an M web address directly to an exchange uh, deposit address. So it's a, a soft fork upgrade, so people don't have to even know about the M web extension block. 
or mweb and exchanges don't need to update their software and they can just support the the main chain going forward and not even know about or care about mweb um, okay and because of the opt-in nature uh most people are okay with it because you can still see everything going on so mweb doesn't hide um kind of the transaction history it there's scalability benefits where if for example if i send some coins to you and you send those coins to someone else the the transaction from me to you and you to someone else can actually just be dropped from the blockchain because it's it's spent it's no longer needed um so because of that there's some scalability benefits scalability benefits because the the blockchain size can be reduced um and that provides a little bit of more kind of privacy if you, if you will but it's not it's not like monero for example so it's it's kind of a different kind of privacy um and okay. i think exchanges will be okay with it um from what i can tell and yeah so okay so there i so the answer the bottom line is there is definitely some risk right so we're we're keeping a close eye on it if there's if all the exchanges start to delist Litecoin because of MWeb, then obviously this is not the right thing to do, right? So liquidity right. is very important, um, but it's a there's a balance, right? So yeah, so so here, so you can call side on it. So here's my question then. So you know, exchanges obviously you know have the opt in or opt out option. So you know, I'm just a layman. I'm not the full expert. So correct me if this is wrong. So can my personal wallet, my light wallet, or let's say I have an Exodus wallet or something like that, can I still, you know, perform in that MWeb transaction through my wallet or is it just through exchanges or how does that work? It's, it, is it okay in a wallet? Depends. So your wallet needs to upgrade, right? So, um, oh, so it depends if the wallet wants to upgrade, right? The Yeah. Okay. So Litecoin Core obviously will support it, the desktop wallet. We're going to work on adding it to light wallet. Um, so once if you support it then the wallet can send to an mweb address and you can also always receive from an mweb address right if someone has their coin on the mweb side they and, you, and your wallet doesn't support it they will just send it to your regular address the coins will be pegged out of the extension block into the uh the main chain and you will just get the coins right so you you don't really care where the coins came from but you won't be able to send to an MWeb address, right? If if, if the recipient ha gives you an MWeb address, your wallet will be would not understand what that is. So okay. um, it will take some time for the uh, for the community for the wallets and everything to start supporting MWeb, um, and that's expected. And th that's why this is a this is a software upgrade. It's not you're not we're not required everyone to support it from the start. Okay. Now moving on to a different topic. What was your first thought? You know, I'm sure you were in communications with PayPal or maybe they reached out to you first. What were, what was your first thought when you were like, holy crap, Litecoin is being added to PayPal? Um, they actually didn't reach out to me. So the, I found out about it actually a few weeks before they launched. And it's just because a friend of mine happened to be in the beta testing of that, of the product. And he okay. reached out to me and said, FYI, this is coming out, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy. So That's I was awesome. very, I was very excited about it, um, obviously, um, and it's it's awesome that they chose to support Litecoin without um, without me like ask, asking them, right? So they they saw yeah. out of all the cryptos, they decided to support Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash, and that was it. And it's yeah, it's it's huge, right? Last year when they it announced it, it was like the big biggest news of the year. It really um kind of made bitcoin and litecoin mainstream right it's paypal yeah. is, is a big player and they're gonna let people buy and sell bitcoin and litecoin um i mean thinking about it right now it's still pretty crazy that this is happening it if is. you uh four years ago like if you tell me that this is going to happen i wouldn't believe you right it's it's kind of it's pretty crazy yeah it is crazy and and again you know right now you know, because I, I, I post a bunch of tweets and, you know, I say, well, you know, a lot of good things about Litecoin, right? You know, I'm pretty bullish, not only, you know, on the network, you know, but also on the price, right? And a lot of people just keep giving me crap, you know, 
I start to see some more disbelievers, and it usually tells me, okay, Litecoin's bottoming out against Bitcoin, right? If we talk a little bit of price. And if you look at the cyclicality of it, if you look at the chart, LTC, BTC, you see the exact same price momentum that happened in 2017, which is in 2017, Litecoin bottomed out in March, and it used March and April as the spring to shoot basically to all-time high. It was tremendous, right? In both USD pair and BTC pair. What do you say? You know, I know we probably shouldn't talk price or anything like that, but what do you say to people? Because there's a lot of people that kind of need hope, <laughs> you know, and I can only do so much, right? You know, when I tweet and, and try to help them out. What, what do you, can you give them some hope? What are your thoughts? Well, I like no one really knows the future, obviously. So, um, yeah, when in 2017, we saw the same thing. Like Litecoin, LTC, BTC just kind of kept dropping as Bitcoin was going up and got to like a really like low point before it started picking up, right? During that time, I was thinking about 2013, actually. In 2017, I was like, 2013, the same thing happened. Like... LTC BTC dropped to an all-time low, and then, um, and then it shot up. It it hit like the high of fifty dollars at that time, which is like I think it was it, it was over a billion dollar market cap, and that was like the high of twenty thirteen, and that was crazy when that happened because it went from like like fifty cents to like fifty dollars, right? <laughs> in in a matter of a few months. Um, so we saw the same thing happening in um, twenty seventeen. It went from it was at four dollars forever around. And it's, there was like a meme going on about Litecoin always staying at four dollars. It was like the stable coin. <laughs> um, and as Bitcoin was going up, Bitcoin went from uh, whatever a few hundred dollars to over a thousand. Sorry, for twenty seven, it went from like less than a thousand dollars to to like fifteen thousand. Um, by then, like the Litecoin stayed at like four dollars, if I remember correctly. So the LTC BTC ratio kept going down. And then Litecoin had its, because of like SegWit and everything else um, going on with Litecoin, it really shot up, right? It went all the way to whatever, to uh, the, like 300, over $300. Um, would this, could the same thing happen this time? Yeah, it could happen if history repeats itself. Um, but you, you don't know for sure, right? So right. I tell people like, like it's you can't really focus on the price, right? If you, if you have like, and I also tell people like don't don't go all in on Litecoin, right? Litecoin is is very volatile. It's even more speculative than Bitcoin, right? So definitely hold some hold some Bitcoin. I've tweeted about this before. Like yeah. you, like it'll, it'll be good for your heart, right? <laughs> just just have some Bitcoin <laughs> yeah. uh, because Bitcoin will always do. It's the king of crypto. It will it will always do well. At times, Litecoin will outperform Bitcoin. So obviously, if you held everything in Litecoin, it's a gamble. But sometimes you you it pays off, right? But but it's definitely very stressful. <laughs> it's not good for your heart to have everything in Litecoin. So <laughs> hold some Bitcoin and don't worry about the price, right? It's it's gonna do what it does. Um, it's gonna, I think it's gonna go like, go past all time high, it's gonna shoot up, but then it's gonna like uh, plateau, right? It's gonna drop back right down. So in 2017, I tweeted that the price could drop like 80, 90% and you might see Litecoin trend dollars. Same thing would happen this time, right? If it goes to like a thousand, let's say this time, it could go, it could drop back down to two hundred, right, or even one hundred. Um, so you can't really like focus on the price. Uh, you just kind of have right. to just buy and hold, and and in the end, it's kind of like I see it not as an investment, and more as a, a store of value, right? It's a it's a long term store of value for Bitcoin, Litecoin, and these major cryptocurrencies. You kind of move your money into crypto because you think it's a better way to store your money than um, than fiat and even like gold, right? So diversify your wealth, put it into crypto and kind of just forget about it. If, you, if you're doing this as like a speculative investment, then I think that's a wrong play, right? Yeah. And it's, it's just too stressful. And, you know, it's interesting. You talk about it being a store of value and, you know, if you actually look, Long term to the max life of Litecoin. If you pull up the chart, US dollar performance against Litecoin, it is in a complete downtrend from the moment Litecoin was created. So, what that means, you know, a lot of people 
kind of don't grasp it, right? And the audience, they're just newbies entering. What that means is that ever since Litecoin was created, Litecoin has been able to hold your value, your purchasing power more than if you were to hold dollars. And the same thing has happened with Bitcoin. And so, you know, like you said, long term, it serves as a good store of value. And it is because of its characteristics, the scarcity aspect, right? And so I say people just need to be a little patient. And I tell a lot of people, follow the money and look at the fundamentals. What is Grayscale accumulating the most recently? Litecoin. Grayscale is composed basically of institutions that are looking for alpha or that are looking for a good investment, right? So that's one thing. Another thing, MWeb integration is a positive thing, similar to what SegWit did, right, in 2017. And what are the coins that PayPal's adding? You know, PayPal is not just picking some random coin out there that, you know, you know, it's Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? So it's solid coins that have been out there. And, you know, I, I, I hear there's talks around, you know, I think PayPal announced that Venmo is going to also, you know, be able to use Litecoin and Bitcoin and all that stuff, right? So that's also coming out. And so to me, I think people need to be patient and people need to look more at the LTC BTC ratio than at the US dollar chart. And if you just want to hold your store of value, look at that US dollar versus Litecoin. And the story just, you know, it tells it for itself. And so I think those are my thoughts on that. I don't know yeah. if you have anything to add. Well, I think, I mean, Litecoin has been around for almost 10 years now, right? That's, that's a really long time. So right. to, this year is Litecoin's 10 year anniversary. It was created in, in 2011. Um, so you kind of need to zoom out, right? If you, I think people are just too focused on the day to day, right? So yeah. Litecoin, yeah, there's always these new and shiny coins that have kind of surpassed Litecoin, have pumped a lot more than Litecoin. That's always going to be the case. Um, there's always going to be something that Litecoin will will not will not be like the coin that has risen the most, right? It's just there's always going to be something else that a smaller market cap coin or something that has done better. So, and people love to compare Litecoin to the latest craze, right? And that's not that's not fair because Litecoin is not um, it's, it will be around in 10 years. These other coins, who knows if they're going to be around in 10 years. In 2017, there were a lot of coins that were higher than Litecoin market cap, and today, today they're nowhere to be found, right? So Litecoin will, 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 will last a lot longer these, than these other coins, and Bitcoin even more so, right? So a lot of people think Bitcoin, or Bitcoin is boring. A lot of people think Litecoin is boring. Yeah, so like... If you're investing in Litecoin, you kind of have to just like put it there and it's a long-term play, right? If you compare Litecoin price to a year ago, last year we were at, we hit like a $23 low, right? Now we're around 200, so it's 10, 10 times gains. So that's like, that's quite a bit. And you can't right. really look at the day-to-day, -day. you just have to like zoom out. Yeah, and what, what are your thoughts right now, you know, off topic with, um, Tesla, Elon Musk. I literally woke up at like 7 a.m. I go to Twitter. <laughs> Elon Musk was up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. doing I don't know what. And he said, we are now accepting Bitcoin as a method of payment for Tesla cars. And not only are we accepting it as a method of payment, but we're going to keep that revenue in Bitcoin and not convert it into fiat. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's it's kind of kind of expected because when they bought Bitcoin, they said they're going to look into accepting it, right? But the reality is is awesome when they actually start accepting it, which which they started. So um, it's it's cool, right? I think it's it's big news. I've always wanted Tesla to to accept Bitcoin and eventually Litecoin for for their cars. I think yeah. For um, and the best part of that this news is that they're not using a payment processor. Right. They're not using like BitPay or, or someone else crazy. to accept Bitcoin. They built it in-house. They or they're using a open source software to maybe even like um yeah, so so it's great because they're they're doing it themselves, they're accepting Bitcoin and they're keeping it. Right. They're keeping it on their balance sheet and they're not converting to US dollar, which is awesome. Um and which is the way like everybody should be eventually. Right. A lot, a lot right. of people are using BitPay and other merchant processors to accept 
Bitcoin, crypto, and convert it immediately to dollar. And that's not that's a stepping stone to the to kind of like the 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 real way that crypto should work, which is people are sending cryptos to each other and everyone's just keeping it inside the crypto ecosystem. And do you think this is going to be kind of like a Kickstarter for other companies to start joining? I mean, look, micro micro strategy started the whole deal with, you know, we're adding Bitcoin to our balance sheet, right? Then came out a few other companies, then Tesla. And I feel like Tesla being the company that it is, everyone in the world knows Tesla. Everyone in the world knows Elon Musk. Um, you know, when they said, hey, you know, we're buying, I don't know how much they bought, $5 billion worth of Bitcoin, putting in a balance sheet. And now they're accepting it. I mean, look, Bitcoin has been going up in value against the dollar. It is a store of value. The most, you know, legendary investors are buying it, calling it a store of value in this basically inflationary system i mean are people going to start realizing wait a minute we do need to start buying bitcoin or do you see like big companies like apple maybe adding it to the apple wallet or maybe adding it i mean do you see this as a domino effect i guess is my question um yeah i do i think uh if they're not they're definitely looking into it right if they're not if they haven't pulled the trigger i mean i'm sure a lot of companies have pulled the trigger and they just haven't announced it yet or they maybe they're not required to announce it they're just going to keep it to themselves because it some people will think it's risky but in reality it's risky not to hold crypto right not to hold bitcoin so it's a smart and and um surprisingly conservative play to hold bitcoin on your balance sheet um and i'm sure these big companies are looking to it and when that happens like in, on the massive scale, then the price will just it will moon, right? Because yeah, because companies like Apple have trillions of dollars like in cash, right? And actually, I don't know where they have they store their money, but they have trillions of dollars, um, right? And if they just put a small percentage into into Bitcoin, uh, it's going to be huge, right? And like you- Tesla put seven percent, I think, of their of their uh, treasury yeah. into into Bitcoin. I think it's like $1.5 billion and they might add to it um, and they're selling cars for it. So they're, it's going to increase. I, th- um, I think they've made more money um, with the appreciation of Bitcoin and their balance sheet than selling cars. <laughs> that's yeah. the funny thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's why this, this bull run is, is not over yet. I think it's, it's just the start. Yeah. And I, you know, just like you say, you know, that risky aspect, you know, I I made a tweet, a video, and I'm like, look, a lot of people call me risky for, you know, being all in on Bitcoin and Litecoin. Mm-hmm. But then I tell them, have you realized that since Bitcoin and Litecoin were created, you know, back to that comment, the dollar has been depreciating. It has been devalued against Bitcoin and Litecoin. Ultimately, I end up having more purchasing power by holding Bitcoin and Litecoin. Everyone has their own risk tolerance, correct? But if I look at how I've done, I've done better, right? And part of the reason why I got in this in this whole like crypto and Bitcoin and Litecoin game is because of the current financial system, right? The current financial system, I call it Wall Street over Main Street. And what do I mean by that? We have the fiat system which the Federal Reserve just printed, basically the U.S. government just printed about 30 to 40% of all U.S. dollars ever in, in the existence of the U.S. in a matter of a year and a half. And that rings alarms to me, right? That rings a bell, right? Wait a minute. I mean, that's an issue. And so we need to start putting some of our money into something that is not inflationary, but actually deflationary, right? Because Litecoin is scarce, Bitcoin is scarce. And, you know, this brings me to my next point. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the current economic environment as governments print trillions? Again, that 40% that has been printed in about a year and a half. Do you see inflation coming? I mean, if you look around, real estate is going up in value, Bitcoin going up in value, Litecoin, commodities, equities. What are your thoughts? Um, it is pretty crazy that the, the Fed has printed, uh, was it 20 or 40% of all all US all in existence in last year. It's around, it's around 30, yeah. Yeah, that's like, it's unheard of. Um, it doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> that in one year they can like 
increase the the amount of US dollar by 30%. Um, and it seems like they're not stopping, right? There's stimulus bills left and right, they're doing more. And this year they might even print more. Um, and that's good for good for um, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and crypto in general. Um, but in the end, I think you have to think of it this way: you're you're putting money, you're putting your your wealth in crypto because it holds purchasing power. The most important thing is that it holds purchasing power, right? It's inflation proof. So U.S. dollar does not hold purchasing power. It's not going to, right? Ten years ago, things cost a lot less than they cost right now in U.S. dollar terms. But not only is crypto like holding purchasing power, it's actually helping you increase purchasing power because of the current economic system out there that the U.S. dollar is being printed. And also because we don't really know, like crypto hasn't reached its final form yet, so to speak, right? It's not, it's still kind of growing, it's still trying to figure out where it fits into the whole whole space. So it's still going to grow faster than, than anything else. So it's definitely a good conservative um, play to put part or even most of your wealth into something that holds purchasing power or even uh, increases your purchasing power. So yeah, I think this current environment is just it's just great for for crypto, even good for for gold and silver. Um, it's good for real estate. Real estate prices are going to go through the roof. Um, in the end, like the U.S. dollar is just keep on inflating away. Would it do? Would it go to hyperinflation? We don't know. I think it's inevitable that the U.S. dollar would just become worthless. I mean, if you look at the past like few hundred years, it's already become worthless compared to what it was 200 years ago. Yeah. Um, but even more so now, I think it's just going to spiral out of control. Um, but it'll, it'll still be okay. I think maybe it might not happen in our lifetime, um, but it's inevitable that the US dollar would, would hyperinflate. That's my opinion. And definitely hold your don't hold your wealth in it because then you'll lose all your purchasing power. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, I, you know, and, and the whole game, you know, is basically like I said, Wall Street over Main Street, and that, you know, the top ten percent of the United States hold nearly fifty percent of all assets, commodities, real estate, Bitcoin, all of that, and then the bottom fifty percent only hold two percent, right, of all assets, and so that just tells you right there with this printing, and it's ha it has been happening. It's been the trend for forty years. The prices of assets have been increasing, and who holds assets? The rich. Who holds yeah. cash? The people, and so that's my main driver and thesis. It behind is. Litecoin. It's very unfortunate. You're you're, per, you're exactly right. Um, like last year, the pandemic happened, and the rich just got richer, right? Like Bezos and Musk, just their wealth like exponentially increased, and like this this stimulus, right? Like printing money to to send cash to people, like half the money they printed goes to other things. Right. So when they print money, they're devaluing everybody's money. Right. And then they're giving you half of it back. So if you if you step back and look at it, you're actually losing money when that happens because you're the money that you actually hold today gets devalued and then you get half of it back how much of how much it gets devalued. So you're actually losing money. And you're not actually making money, even though everyone's getting like a check. But in reality, over if you step back over the long time, long term, you're actually losing money. So it's actually just a crappy way of handling this thing. And you, you want to know something? Living proof of this. If you would have put your $1,200 stimulus check last year when you got it into Bitcoin, you'd now be holding around $15,000 or something crazy like that. More, so that tells you yeah. that tells you right there what has held purchasing power and better yet, increased it. Not dollars. <laughs> yeah. So It's pretty funny that um, when the stimulus check went out, Coinbase released some stats about people buying this exact amount of, of Bitcoin, right? Or, or crypto. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, they saw like a spike in in that denominated amount of, of Bitcoin for that for that like week span or something. That's pretty funny. I didn't see that. that. That's pretty funny. But anyway, okay. So just to wrap things up. All right, Charlie. So I am going to, you know, say anything, a phrase, a word, and you have to respond with only one word description, only one word. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, gold. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know what you're gonna say about Litecoin. What Litecoin? 
Silver. <laughs> um, stock market. Um, crap. <laughs> 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 what, what what do you say that like, because it's so overvalued and just getting pumped yeah it's it's kind of it's just yeah i i wouldn't touch it <laughs> okay um what about peter schiff old <laughs> um, or, or old school how about that if that's one old school there you go that works ah oh, what's what's another one oh uh, Let's see, MWeb. Fungibility. Okay. All right. I think I'm running out of words. I think that's good enough. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, last question. Um, I'm, I'm a, again, I always say I'm a copycat of Anthony Pompliano because I really love these questions that he asks at the end. Two questions. What is your favorite book or a movie or something that has, you know, given you a lot of you know, change overall change or like, wow, you know, this changed my life, how I do things. Um, I'm a huge fan of star Wars. So I, would oh say star Wars. I mean, I, I can tell you have a lightsaber behind you too. <laughs> I have one right there. Oh, really? What, what kind? Um, it's just a hilt. One second. Oh, that's sweet. That's awesome. I think yeah. we have the exact, hold on, hold on. I got to bring it to me. <laughs> so this is cool. Yeah, so this is uh I think it's the same one. I think it's Luke Skywalker's. Is it the yeah, same one? It is the same one. There you go. Mm. I actually made a video talking about Litecoin and I'm like, may the light force be with you. And then I went <laughs> like Yeah. That. I'll I'll turn mine on also. Can you, <laughs> can you add a special effects afterwards? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to do that. But anyway, yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan. Sorry if I cut you off. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, but I, I have uh, posters all over my my living room over there with the Mandalorian and all that stuff. But anyway, okay, so Star Wars, why 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 Star Wars? Why is it so meaningful? Um, it's just so cool, right? It just like I mean, I watched it when I was a kid. It took you to a, a galaxy far, far away, right? It's very image imaginative. Um, yeah, it's my my saying is any movie with a lightsaber can't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey that's true i agree with that what about okay so i guess you like star wars so this probably answers my next my next question do you believe in aliens i do i think um it's just the ch the chances that there are aliens uh that, that have even visited earth is just it's very high right there's the the yeah. number that people calculate based on the number of um planets in this in the world or in the in the galaxy in the uh, in the universe with plants that can have life and chance of life forming and life being more advanced than us. It's just, it's just a high number. So yes, I do believe in, in it. I'm not sure if they, yeah, there's a lot of like people like seeing like UFOs and stuff, right? I don't know how much of that is, is true, but I do believe there are aliens. Cool. But I don't, I, I don't, I want to caveat this by saying that I don't, I hope they never show themselves because it's going to like, <laughs> It's gonna destroy um, like everything, right? Like if, if they show show up and show themselves, we might have wars. We might start attacking them. Um, who knows, right? So it's gonna destroy our what we like how we're working, how life is happening right now. Which which would yeah, be I think uh, people would be freaking out a bit. It'd be a yeah. big big concern. <laughs> but anyway, Charlie, thanks for coming on the show. I'm really happy that you came in. A lot of people needed to hear. Just Charlie Lee, the man, the Litecoin man. So a lot of people just need that hope. And, you know, a lot of people love to hear you. So it's great that you came. Sure. Thanks. I'm, it was, I was glad to be here. <laughs>